basic premise of a few minutes. It's definitely sci-fi, it's a cop show, but, mm -hmm. you know, thematically it explores, you know, also what it means to be a human, a, a person. One of my favorite things uh, working with Joel Wyman uh, on, on Fringe was that he was always someone who uh, walked that tightrope of embracing the most, you know, human, relatable, emotional stories with the weirdest crap you've ever seen in your life. Um, when he pitched to us this idea for uh, for human, it was that same feeling, um, but, you know, times a million, because it was a, human was very much a, um, a, a cop show. You know, you've seen cop shows a million times. It felt like in that kind of genre, but because the story was so specific to uh, the, the main characters, John and, and Dorian, uh, it, it took on a very specific, unique, and, and personal kind of sense of irony and humor and, and a tone that I knew Joel was going to you know, deliver on. Um, the show is essentially about a, a cop, John Kennex, who is in, a, in an incredibly uh, uh, violent and, and um, scary uh, opening sequence. Uh, he is injured and is uh, put into a coma for a couple years. And when he wakes up, he realizes, among other things, uh, that uh, he is no longer completely human. There are parts of him, pieces uh, inside and out, that have been replaced with uh, synthetic parts, and yet he has survived, and he is coming back to the Force. He is partnered with, and is required to partner with, um, as all cops are in this time, uh, 50 years or so in the future, uh, a synthetic uh, partner. And he's not game for that, uh, really, but this synthetic partner actually has a little bit of, uh, of human in him. So there's a kind of yin-yang thing going on. And we've all seen those kind of cop you know, uh, shows where they've got partners and their issues, and we've all seen kind of robots as sort of these, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, almost computer, walking computers and, and kind of, you know, uh, logical beings. What I sort of loved about the show immediately was, in many ways, Dorian, who's the synthetic cop, is is far more human than his human partner. Um, John is much more closed, emotionally uh, compromised, a real piece missing, kind of this damaged guy. Uh, Dorian is actually feeling and has a sense of humor and is sort of kind and 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 he has the kind of personality that you'd sort of want in a partner. He's brave and and reliable and incredibly smart. Uh, he doesn't have any of that sort of you know monosyllabic or or you know. Uh, Kind of binary thinking that you'd you'd expect for you know in, in a synthetic you know robot partner, and the adventure that they go on together, they desperately need each other. They couldn't go on without without the other. John could not go out into the field if it weren't for a synthetic partner, and this is the perfect guy. Uh, Dorian was you know going to be sent off to do work on the uh, the space station, which was going to put him in the sort of scariest, coldest, loneliest job in the history of time. So John saves Dorian, Dorian saves John, and the two of them go out together and uh, save the world. Yeah, what are the stakes on, on that show? The world. Uh, the stakes. Um, well, the, um, there are a number of different things going on, um, given that it's, uh, it's the future. They're dealing with uh, crime that you wouldn't find on another show. Uh, there's this uh, organization called In Syndicate that is out, uh, that is sort of back in the mix again, and they're doing some pretty uh, insidious, dangerous stuff. Uh, and you see in the first episode, one of the things that they're trying to do, and uh, without giving anything away, you know, John and Dorian, you know, working together, save the day. But what I love about the show is it allows for it to be a relatable, uh, um, sort of tangible, grounded world with just a little bit of tweak so that things are not quite the way we see them. I mean, if you look around, you know, on any street, you'll see cars that are, you know, 30, 40 years old driving around. You know, it, it's not like everything is suddenly some crazy Jetsons, futuristic, you know, BS world. It's, it feels very real, very relatable. But, you know, certain, obviously, technologies and, and architecture and certain things are, you know, wardrobe and costumes, they're just a little bit different than what you'd expect. But it allows you to do some really cool stuff besides just having a partner who's synthetic in the show and all the complications that that, that you know uh, leads to it also allows you to sort of have hyper real uh, stories you know stories about bad guys that are doing things that are scarier larger you know more unexpected than you could do today so it lets you do a kind of great metaphor and you go oh that's I know what that is because that's happening now but it's like that and it lets you tell a story that's not quite anything you've seen before yeah, I was on set with Joel, and he was showing me the set. And the super, it's like ultra futuristic, but with little touches of hologram. But this is really a character-based show. 
Yeah, I mean, the idea is that, is that it, you don't want the, the aesthetic to get in the way of, of storytelling. So obviously the balance as we go will be figured out. But there are certain things that obviously uh, Brad Anderson has directed the pilot and, and Joel and I, you know, we've talked about to kind of give points, you know, uh, uh, pointers to a, a future time, but not have it be distracting. Good. Um, what is the actual, what's the tone of the show? Because, I mean, the chemistry with the two leads is, is so amazing and there's a lot of humor that comes out of it, but it also is sort of like a... Uh, Future yeah, I, I think that the, the tone of the show, despite the premise, is uh, is real, funny, scary. It's sort of everything that, that we love kind of in one show. But I think that, that if the show felt like it was sort of taking itself too seriously, you know, the audience could laugh at the show. If the show was too jokey, it starts to feel like a comedy that's not real. So the, the balance, the critical balance is that it just feel like the way life is, which, you know, you go through the day with real stakes, you know, real drama, real laughter, you know, it just, it, it feels like a, ideally, a show that, that has a great sense of humor, um, but again, it is very much, a, a, you know, high stakes, you know, uh, intense action drama. Great, and then this, this question is gonna be for both of them, but um, we're asking all of the, all the producers of all the pilots this year for Warner Brothers, what is it about Warner Brothers television that you think makes uh, a good home for these kind of shows? Oh, what about why am I working with Warner Bros? Uh, really? I mean, I'll, I, I, uh, the reason I'm working uh, with Warner Brothers is because uh, I could not love Peter Roth more. Um, he's someone who I've known for years, and we've wanted to work together for so long. And despite you know all the uh, you know the the challenges and difficulties of sort of getting everything done, and there's always stuff going on, and there's no one I'd rather be in the trenches with. Than Peter, um, and there's no one who loves TV more than Peter. And uh, working with him, you know, I, I always feel like uh, there's a guy who's just, you know, who has been through so much, who knows so much about television, um, who is so supportive of the work that's being done, and who appreciates it when it gets done well. And I just, uh, he's someone that uh, I just adore and love working with. I think the thing about human that is so um, appealing is the humanity of it, that there is uh, this great sense of, uh, of connection between these two partners. And while there are, of course, mysteries and disagreements and things that will come up that will complicate their relationship, the core of the show really uh, is, is the relationship between these two. And the fun of it is to have the kind of, you know, every week standalone sort of, you know, crime issue, the thing that has to get dealt with. So the intrigue, the mystery, the revelations, the, the solution to these stories will be, I think, obviously, uh, uh, you know, critical in every, every show. The, the thing that will keep it unique and, I think, really compelling for audiences, I think, all over the world is that this specific relationship is something that not only, I think, is really funny and, and relatable, but because it's about a future thing. There's a little bit of a, oh, this is where we're going, and there's an inevitability to that that I think is a really cool thing uh, to watch.